Hey, it's Chris. Before we get started, let me just say thank you to everybody who's purchased the Learning to Be Productive course. I've seen the comments and I'm glad that it's been so useful. This video is gonna be all about helping you figure out whether or not you're an airhead for picking up the brand new 15 inch MacBook Air, or if you, the 14 inch MacBook Pro, should be a MacBook No. And this is a tough comparison. I love my 14 inch MacBook Pro. It's the greatest, but at the same time, I absolutely love the MacBook Air. It's so light. Every time I use it, I'm like, I wish this is how all portable Macs were. Now, I'm not gonna keep you waiting till the end of the video to give you what you actually want. Buy the MacBook Air if you value portability, a larger screen for multitasking, and a balance of performance and affordability. This is a great option for everyday tasks, for content consumption, and for light to moderate professional work. On the other hand, buy the MacBook Pro if you're a professional or a power user who needs that high performance for demanding tasks, you want that high quality mini LED display for color accurate work, and if you need more ports for connectivity. The MacBook Pro is a powerhouse laptop that's designed for heavy duty tasks. If you're in the market for an Apple laptop, I think this is a comparison a lot of people are gonna be doing. And what I wanna do is erase the need for you to do a bunch of research, have it all done for you. But this is an obvious comparison and here's why. The 15 inch MacBook Air and the 14 inch MacBook Pro are both high performance laptops. And they share a lot of features, M2 chips, retina displays, but these represent different points on Apple's spectrum of laptops. They both offer a balance of performance and portability and some really great features for different types of professionals at different price points. Now I wanna start by talking a little bit about the weight, kinda of do a little comparison here because it's all in the name, MacBook Air. One of the reasons you're supposed to like the Air is how light it is for when you bring it with you, whether it's to the coffee shop or on the plane. Even though it's named the MacBook Air, the 15 inch actually weighs 3.3 pounds, which is not all that much lighter than the 14 inch MacBook Pro, which weighs in at 3.6 pounds. Now that difference of 0.3 pounds, it's not all that big, but to give you a tangible comparison, hauling around the 14 inch MacBook Pro would be like bringing an extra deck of cards with you, or it would be the weight of a baseball, or like carrying around the addition of an average smartphone. So in a way, these are both kind of of airs. When you're a professional and you're loading up a bunch of gear into your bag and you're at an event and you got the backpack on all day long, it gets really heavy. The shoulders start to ache and there does come a point when you're like, I've done enough of these that I'm going to shave every little bit of weight off of my equipment pack that I can. What about power? Just because the MacBook Air is thin, that doesn't mean that it's not powerful. Now, obviously, the 14-inch MacBook Pro is going to be more powerful, not just because of its architecture and its thermal management. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, but it's got the better chips, right? The M2 Pro, the M2 Max, those live inside the MacBook Pro. I'm trying to figure out a way to make this comparison really hit home and land with people who really are non techy and I think a really great way to explain this is that the Air is sort of like a well-equipped home kitchen. It's got everything you need to prepare your favorite recipes. It can handle most of the stuff you're cooking up with ease. But by comparison, the MacBook Pro is sort of like a professional restaurant's kitchen. It's got more powerful equipment. It can handle more complex things at a higher scale. And really, unless you're a professional chef, you don't need it. What's funny is there's a lot of people who think they need the MacBook Pro who could really get away with using the MacBook Air. And then there's a lot of people who want to get the MacBook Air that should probably get the MacBook Pro. But that brings us to the screens. Now this isn't as straightforward a comparison as you might think. Obviously, everyone's excited that the 15 inch MacBook Air is now available in 15 inches. Nice and big, especially for a portable device. The 14 inch MacBook Pro on the surface is obviously smaller, but you have to keep in mind the actual screen quality itself is quite a bit nicer. So this isn't just apples to apples. So to give you kind of an analogy, think of it like a desk. The more desk space that you have, obviously the more room you have to spread things out and get comfortable, see everything at a glance. So think about it like multitasking. You're gonna have less space, you know, more concentrated space on the 14 inch MacBook Pro than you will on the 15 inch. Is it a huge difference? It's not a huge difference, but depending on the apps that you're making use of, it can be tangible, can be noticeable. I'm thinking about people who do video editing and being able to see a bit bigger of a preview and more of the details of what you're editing, for instance, that can make a big difference. When you're just doing like text editing or something, emails, that's less of a big deal. Now, both of these feature nice screens, good screens that you could be really happy with, but the 14 inch Pro does have that higher quality with the mini LED technology. And the way to think about this is, it's kind of the difference between 
a standard TV and a 4K TV. You're gonna see the same stuff, but it's not gonna be the same experience between the different screens. You know, the colors are gonna pop more with the mini LED, the blacks are gonna be darker, which then creates more contrast between dark areas and lighter, you know, colorful areas with that saturation. So if you want a clearer and more vibrant experience, you're definitely gonna want the Pro, but that doesn't necessarily make it more immersive because the other screen is bigger. So if you're gonna be streaming stuff, this is a tough choice there between bigger or nicer. And that brings us to the ports. Obviously, the MacBook Pro is known for its ports. Professional people have to plug a lot of things in. If you work with SD cards, I got a million of those laying around. It's so nice to not have to use a dongle and to just have a slot where that slots in if you're doing photography, videos. Then on the air, you've basically got two ports and a headphone jack. But think through the setup that you're gonna be creating. Are you just gonna be using just this on your desk and nothing else? Okay. Maybe you don't need the extra ports, but the second you wanna add in some monitors or some external drives, then you're gonna want extra ports because those things go fast when you start plugging stuff in. Here's my funny comparison though for the ports. It's sort of like having extra pockets. You may not need all that pocket space every single day like with the cargo pants, <laughs> but when you do need it, it comes in really handy. And there's times when you can't get away without it. Let's talk about memory and storage. A lot of people probably aren't really even going to be thinking about this when they are looking at the air, but it's sort of like having in your physical space more shelves and more places to put things. And the Pro definitely offers more options, more space. And the reason that matters is when you have a lot of files or you're running some really memory intensive applications, you don't want things to start bogging down. It does actually end up potentially affecting your performance when you're doing some real heavy lifting. And the other thing is Apple's not known for its upgradability. So whatever you end up getting now, whenever you make the purchase, that's what you're pretty much gonna be stuck with. So I think those things are really the main points, but there's a few things I wanna point out that are gonna affect your experience that probably a lot of reviews and comparisons are gonna miss that it's easy to gloss over. Number one, the thermal management. The MacBook Pro is just more advanced in terms of its thermal architecture. Heat can actually really affect your performance. I know the average everyday consumer is not thinking about that, but the MacBook Pro can sustain higher performance for longer without overheating, and that is going to matter to certain professionals. So the keyword is demanding tasks. If you have demanding tasks that you need to perform, then the MacBook Pro is called Pro for a reason. It comes through for you when time actually matters. I also wanna point out the speakers. Now, a lot of times you're gonna be using AirPods or some headphones, or maybe you're gonna be playing over your HomePods, right? But if you're not, if you're just planning on letting the computer do its thing, maybe you're a student in the dorm room or something, and this thing is what you watch on, it's also your sound system, or whatever, you want it to be as good as possible, well, both have nice sound systems. I'm not gonna downplay the sound on the air, but it's absolutely true that the 14-inch MacBook Pro is gonna have a better sonic experience. So unlike the screens, you know, you could make the debate that a bigger screen or a nicer screen is gonna be more immersive. That's kind of more up in the air and subjective. Here, it's not subjective. The sound is going to sound better objectively it's gonna be more immersive on the Pro. Something else that a lot of people aren't gonna think about is display brightness, which we measure in nits. And if you like a nice bright display, then you're definitely gonna to wanna to go with the Pro. It gets brighter by a long shot. I've had some really nice external displays that didn't get very bright. And I've had my Mac open over on the side, which gets really bright. And then that screen was crispy, nice, but not very bright. And it ruined the whole thing for me. Brightness actually really matters, especially if you got windows nearby. I would say the two areas where it really matters the most would be number one, if you work outside very often, only you know that, maybe you're at the cafe, right? And you like that outdoor time or you wanna work out on the back deck or something, but also for HDR content. If you're really trying to get the most out of streaming stuff, or if you're actually in a professional environment editing HDR, then yes, you're definitely gonna want that peak brightness. Now, will fewer nits and lower peak brightness actually make or break your laptop experience? I wouldn't say that, right? I don't think it's crucial that you have a much brighter display, but it is really nice. All right, to wrap this up, let's talk about what the killer feature would be for each of these, like the reason to purchase. In a nutshell, I think the killer feature for the 15 inch MacBook Air is the balance of power and portability. It's at the same time, very capable, 
but it's also very carryable, if that makes sense. But really, that 15-inch screen is what's gonna draw people in. It's what people are raving about, what they love. It's just more room to do things like multitask. Now, forget the comparison versus the 14-inch MacBook Pro, but compared to the 13-inch MacBook Air, that extra space is massive. On the 14-inch MacBook Pro side, look at the chips. M2 Pro, M2 Max. This is for professionals who want a laptop, but a laptop that can keep up with their workload. That mini LED liquid Retina XDR is beautiful. Vibrant colors, deep blacks, high brightness. Ideal, you could say, for the Pro, where color accuracy and details really matter. When it comes to the price, obviously, one is more expensive than the other. The Pro offers more features and performance, but you're gonna pay for it, and at this point in the video, you should have a really good idea whether or not the MacBook Air actually offers better value for you. I hope you found this video super useful. If you have some questions, drop them in the comments. Maybe I can answer them, maybe the community can. Also, what are you doing not subscribed to our newsletter yet? It's the best Apple-related newsletter in the world. I don't mind saying that. The open rate speaks for itself so high. I'm really proud of it, so check it out. It comes out on Fridays, keeps you informed without overwhelming you. Also, if you haven't checked out the course yet, Learning to Be Productive, it will help you get more done with less burnout in the Apple ecosystem. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the reviews are in. People are really enjoying it. There's value there. And if you buy it now, at the price that it is now, there's free updates that we're gonna be pumping out as time goes on, making it more valuable all the time. So check it out. It's all linked up down below. Have a great day, and I'll catch you in the next video. Later.